we hope to learn from one another, but uh, it's also testimony to the fact that we are one family, we belong to one another. I'm reminded of um, Archbishop Tabo when he came to Zimbabwe mm -hmm. at the height of our persecution and he said, if you touch any one of these people, you have touched us. And that has had a great impact yeah. on the Diocese of Harare. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and partnership for me goes to the heart of the gospel that we are called to do things together. And Jesus sets us a wonderful model when he calls his disciples and when he sends them, he sends them out two by two. And the other word that um, I want to capture is the word conversation. Is that partnership leads to conversation. And for me, the, the, the word that is hidden in the act of conversation is conversion. That authentic conversations leads to conversion, leads to change, leads to new insight. And so I really am looking forward to this link between the Diocese of Arari and the Diocese of Donna Bay because of the conversations, the storytelling, the transformation that I anticipate that will take place, that will happen to me and will happen to the individuals from our dioceses. The very Bible tells us that uh, you know, for us Christians to say we love God when we hate our neighbor whom we see, you know, is nonsense. And therefore for us as a diocese of Arari, you know, to establish linkages outside of the continent without establishing linkages on the continent, mm -hmm. it does not quite occur well. Yeah, um, like what uh, Bishop Gandia is saying, we are looking forward to this link uh, as Diocese of Harare because we have seen some fruits uh, in links when we were still in the five year struggle. Um, the links that we had did go, went a long way in supporting and giving some needed energy in our parishioners. Uh, to continue to look forward, to live with hope, uh, that was really needed at that time. Yeah. And very quickly, what I'm coming here is that uh, just in this conversation is that the word reconciliation is also an attractive one. You know, as Pat will uh, um, perhaps uh, testify, are we in South Africa, although we celebrate the great event of 1994, um, the Mandela miracle, we still have lots and lots of conversations that need to take place to bring about reconciliation. I'm learning in these days that reconciliation is a journey, it's a pilgrimage, mm -hmm. it's an ongoing process. And, um, and so we're also looking forward to hearing you in the Diocese of Harare because of this tremendous um, journey of reconciliation that you're embarking on. I'm hearing some wonderful stories of how forgiving and open-hearted you are to those who... Um, were not very friendly, creative and cooperative, and who actually took advantage of a dissident um, leadership in the church in Zimbabwe. And I hear that you are actually welcoming uh, those persons back into the fold. Yes. So, um, during the struggle, uh, I've always said that I give credit to Bishop Chad for initiating the reconciliation process way before uh, we had won the court cases uh, because during the struggle you would always say that as Christians we have got that gospel mandate to forgive and this was continually, it was like a song which was sent, was sung to our parishioners each time we were gathered so even when we won the case people already knew and the journey had started it started whilst we were being still being persecuted, which I think uh, we need to do sometimes when we are being persecuted or when we are finding life difficult. We need to start by reconciling whilst we are still suffering. Mm -hmm. And I think it is equally important for whoever is listening to this conversation 
that our context in Zimbabwe is one of a greatly traumatized people. Mm -hmm. When you look at our history, you know, we've been traumatized. But unfortunately, we have not dealt as a nation with the traumas. And us as a church, the events of the last seven years added, you know, to the trauma that was already there. And because of that, as a diocese, we took it upon ourselves long before the issues were sorted out in the courts to start working on reconciliation and healing of that trauma, which I think is also helpful to learn and to hear experiences of uh, your church and of your people in South Africa as a general. I think as somebody who's kind of got a foot in both camps, mm. having lived most of my life in Zimbabwe and now being in the Diocese of Sildana, they, I, I find that this whole, we can learn so much from you in Zimbabwe. What, what you're saying, how reconciliation is an ongoing process and how you started beforehand, really, when there was, in the midst of the sin, as it were, you were already working towards reconciliation. And I think that if we're listening to each other's stories, mm -hmm. with an emphasis on the listening, we can just learn so much. Yeah. And, then, and I find there's a tremendous paradox here because, I mean, we learn from Zimbabwe mm -hmm. about political independence. I mean, you, you, you were a beacon. <laughs> and I just think of Robert Mugabe with Ian Smith sitting together in the same government building and actually taking on the new Zimbabwe. So the political dispensation, I also remember Mugabe saying that what we do need is, um, is an economic revolution. Yeah. But be that as it may, you showed South Africa the way. Yeah. The interesting thing is South Africa gained political freedom in 1994. But then you had this other tragedy of a church being captured, yeah. a church being traumatized. And so we're talking about an ecclesial reconciliation that needs to take place yes. in the midst of a country that is celebrating political freedom, but then another paradox of a government that has seen to forgotten its mandate <laughs> to liberate its people. So I think we've got an issue here of memory that is important. I learned the other day that the opposite of remember is not to forget. If you don't remember you are in danger of the dismembering. Mm. Memory holds the body together. Forgetfulness dismembers. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think, you know, you are going to help us to celebrate our memory in South Africa, not to forget, because as Nelson Mandela said, a nation or a person or individuals that forget their past is at risk of repeating it. Yes. Yeah. Which is one reason why as a diocese, we have told our people that what happened in the last five, six years, seven years will not be forgotten. We are going to remember what happened in the past, but we are not going to allow ourselves to be slaves uh, of what happened in the past. And uh, we were greatly helped by uh, what the Deuteronomist says mm -hmm. when your children ask you why you're doing this because yes, we're going yes. to be remembering the events every November of the year wow. and uh, we're saying when our children ask us why are you doing this then we will be able to tell them that once we were in exile mm -hmm. but God delivered us yeah. And also it's a remembering which is important, but without the pain. Yeah. Passing on the memory, but with the forgetting.